Hello, hello, and welcome back to a new Kubel Space Program video and a new guide. So, today we're going to have a look at the nuclear engines, its pros, cons, and how to properly use it. Like I said, today's um, topic is the LVN, Nerf Atomic Rocket Motor, or better known by the community as just the nuclear engine. I have not talked about this specific engine in the engine guide video, but now it's time to have a deeper look at it, since it's actually more interesting and has more to it than just visible on the first view. On to the raw stats of the engine. The engine has the highest specific impulse of all rocket engines, I'm saying rocket engines, not chemical engines, of 800 seconds. Um, after that, it has a rather low vacuum thrust of 60 kN and a at sea level thrust, which is completely abysmal at 18 um, kN, a mass, mass of 3 tons, and only uses liquid fuel. This is quite important to keep in mind um, when you're designing your fuel tanks and your craft. So, as an example here, we're using a basic craft, command pod, heat shield, parachute, and a 400 unit liquid fuel tank. Like I said, only, and since the LVN only uses liquid fuel, I'm using here a Mark 1 fuselage, with, which is um, actually for aircrafts in order to only store liquid fuel. This gives us a total amount of 2869 meters per second of delta V. Um, delta V is by how much you can actually change your velocity, but I'm sure you guys already know that and its implications. Um, as for the readouts, these are all in vacuum so that we can compare the same two units always. So yeah, that's just easy to compare. It. Speaking of comparing it, that sounds like a pretty solid engine, so we have to compare it. As a comparison, we're also using a 400 unit fuel tank to take kind of like I said the same amount of volume to compare to each other. But we're using now a chemical engine, so that means we need 180 units of liquid fuel and 220 units of oxidizer. As our counterpart to the LVN, we will use the LV909 Terrier engine, a very good upper stage engine with rather high ISP, 347, uh, 47, well, 45, um, and this is approximately around the same ballpark as pretty much all um, upper stage engines, like the Cheetah, the Poodle, the Wolf, and the Rhino. They have some differences here and there, but just keep in mind, this is just for comparison. And more on that actually in the engine guide video. So now if you check the um, Delta V readouts, you can see that this gives us to only, quote unquote, um, 2320 meters per second. So if you go back to the nuclear one, this is actually, nuclear one gives us 500 more meters per second of Delta V at 2869. Or in other words, this is a 23.7% more Delta V than in the Terrier engine. So that means the nuclear engine is just better than the Terrier, and that's it, right? Actually, hold on a minute, this is what I meant, this is a bit more difficult. So, it's time to have a look at these, not these engines um, individually, or these stages individually, but rather in comparison with an entire launch vehicle. So here we have a nice small little launch vehicle for low Cuban orbit, sending up these payload, well, these upper stages. Um, so, the total delta V of the of this launch vehicle with the LV-909 Terrier stage is 5,213 meters per second. If we swap out the Terrier stage with the nuclear stage, we, which has, like I said, 500 more meters per second on its own, we get a total delta V readout of 5,270 meters per second, which is pretty much the same. I mean, literally, those 4 meters per second are not worth even mentioning. So what happened? That's the question, right? And the answer to that is the um, nuclear stage is a lot heavier, at, to be more precise, it's six times more massive, and this additional mass needs to be carried up by its previous stages. And through that, they lose some of their kind of comparable delta V readouts. So, in other words, if you want to lure, um, have the same amount of delta V in your previous stages, you need a bigger stage. In addition, I have launched these two crafts into a 150km orbit to double check the results and the end result was actually that the nuclear stage had 100 meters per second less delta V left. This is most likely to a large amount of piloting consistencies, 
but not 100% of that. I think that uh, one other reason was that the lower thrust to weight ratio made us fight longer against the gravity, which gave us this small amount of delta V loss. So, after all this testing, the main question still remains, when should you be using the nuclear engine, right? So, here we have a fully outfitted Duna mission vehicle. All you need, a lander, crew compartments, some science, a laboratory, solar power, and so on and so forth, all in, all in total 12 tons. Like we already established, mass is a crucial factor. As our rival engine for this time, we're using a Wolfhound engine. This gives us with the fuel, 40 tons in total, and 2698 um, meters per second of delta V. If you do not own the DLC, you can compare the Wolfhound with the Poodle engine. It is a drop in performance overall uh, across the board, and this gives us a total of 2467 meters per second of delta V. And this is more or less like the bare, bare, bare minimum to go to do and back. I have actually calculated this to be around 2370 meters per second using a delta V map, so the amount of delta V you need to go to Duna from low Cuban orbit, I'm always um, calculating, so from low Cuban orbit to Duna um, times 2 plus an additional um, 250 meters per second of delta V for the capture burn at Duna, more or less as a margin of error. Since I obviously plan to use the atmosphere of Duna to do most, if not all, of the capture bone and reducing kind of circularization using the atmosphere of Duna, and then the same on the way back with Kuban, using the atmosphere of Kuban for um, the most part of error capture and the deceleration. Um, yes, okay. Perhaps, however, we're going to use the Wolfhound to further compare the Wolfhound to the nuclear engine. As the lifter stage, we're using a um, upper stage with a Rhino engine and the lower first stage Mammoth engine. This gives us gets us comfortably into low Cuban orbit, which I have actually tested. Um, but now on to the compar comparison. The Wolfhound gives us 2698 meters per second at 40 tons of mass, and this three nuclear stage uh, nuclear engine setup out of seven fuel tanks gives us 3432 meters per second, or again a 27% uh, ish um, increase in delta V. If um, this gives us obviously more delta V in this stage, we can actually continue to reduce the amount of fuel tanks, liquid fuel tanks we have here, up until we reach um, a three engine setup with five fuel tanks. These five fuel tanks now um, have the equivalent amount of delta V compared to the previous comparison with the Wolfhound engine. Just as a small side note, I personally think that three nuclear engine um, for this setup are too many, you just carrying one around without kind of, you still have decent ish, uh, acceptable amount of thrust to weight ratio. But, anyways, that's just my personal preference. And you can use and um, set up the fuel tanks and the engines as you like to your personal preference. But, anyways, this gets us actually now to the conclusion. So, with now the same amount of delta V we had earlier, like the bare minimum at only 35 tons of payload. This means we save 5 tons from the previous setup with the Wolfhound. And these 5 tons obviously um, are incre um, show that we have more delta V in the previous two stages, so in the Rhino and in the Mammoth stage. Or in other words, with the first two stages we will get further. We can already start the um, do not insertion burn with the Rhino engine and not just um, everything with the Wolfhound. And this more or less shows what the nuclear engine, why the nuclear engine is so special. It is something that is not supposed to be compared one to one, one engine with another engine, or one set of fuel tanks with the nuclear engine, or one set of fuel tanks with not the nuclear engine, with another one. But rather, you have to keep the entire launch vehicle as one in mind and build accordingly. So in this per, uh, in this specific example, we have right now a total delta V of um, six thousand eight hundred and seventy three. Um, if we, however, fill out the entire capacity of the launcher of the first launch vehicle, so we're going to fill it up with all those forty tons. Then we get a total delta V of 7478, which 
uses or utilizes the nuclear engine better and with that you get more total performance out of the lifter stage compared to the 6780 that you would get in total if you were to use the wolf hanged engine so in total the message behind this video is generally speaking the bigger your payload the craft that you want to send to a certain body from low curb and orbit is um, like like I said, the heavier it is, the more sense it makes to use nuclear engines. However, you shouldn't be just using nuclear engines in every single craft because they look so promising. Because you do have to keep in mind its downfalls. Because if it wouldn't have, it would be just overpowered. So on this note, I hope you were able to take away something from this video. And I really hope you have enjoyed it, since um, it was quite interesting to make, and I myself learned as well a few things. So, be sure to drop a like if you liked it, and give me feedback and other suggestions in the comments down below, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Space Sheep, signing out.